Hey, Jane. <gasps> hey, Mom, what are you doing in my bedroom? Well, <laughs> I'd like to know if I could ask you 73 questions. I would love that, let's do it. Okay, so what makeup are you wearing right now? Great first question, Mom. Uh, right now, I'm actually not even wearing that much makeup, just a little bit of concealer, the Tower 28 Serum Concealer, my favorite. D Bronzy from Drug Elephant. Mm, this blush from Merit called Fox, which is so pretty. And on my lips, MAC Breakthrough. I've been obsessed with this. What product are you using the most? I think the product that I'm using the most would definitely have to be the new Tower 28 Mascara and Grind. It's a brown color and it is absolutely gorgeous. We know you love that brown. I do love a good brown mascara. What's the first makeup product you remember using growing up? I... <laughs> I remember, first of all, digging through your makeup vanity, uh -huh. obsessively um, looking through all of your makeup. And I remember just being completely obsessed with those Bobbi Brown brick, shimmer bricks. I'd put them all over my face. Do you remember the first makeup product you bought for yourself? I don't really remember the very first product that I bought for myself, but I remember the first makeup that was that was like bought specifically for me. It was with you, of course. And we went to MAC and there was a specific MAC green eyeliner that I would wear every single day. And that thing was like my child. I remember just like drying it so intensely on my lower <laughs> lash line and just wearing that with like so much mascara. And that was what I wore every single day. So that was like the, my first proper makeup product. Sounds beautiful. <laughs> Favorite curly hair product. Ooh, I have been wearing my hair curly more often lately and there are some really great products that I've been loving, but we have to go to my bathroom. And it is so good. It's called the Verb Curl Foaming Gel. It's kind of like a all-in-one product, it's a little bit of a gel, so it has that hold. It also, I find, just does a really good job of like defrizzing and adding some really good definition, and it's it's really awesome. So, are you planning on wearing your hair curly more often? Um, yes, I think so. I'm trying to get more comfortable wearing my hair curly. I know it sounds crazy, but it's a little bit out of my comfort zone, believe it or not. Is your red hair your forever color? Um, I can say that it's my forever color because I think that that's, uh, that's asking a lot because I have no idea what I'm going to want in the future. But for now, I've been loving it. I've had my hair red now for like over a year, which is crazy. And um, I really like it. It's literally the exact color as your hair and it's very close to your natural color. So for some reason, it feels very like me and not unnatural to have this red hair. I see you have a lot of skincare here. Have you found a good eye cream yet? That's a good question. I have been on the hunt for a good eye cream and there is one that I've been really loving. It's brand new from Stradia. It's the Lipid Gold Eye Cream and the Lipid Gold Moisturizer is like a huge favorite of mine. So when they came out with the eye cream, I knew that I had to have it and I'm so happy that it met all of my expectations because it is fabulous. So what is your skincare routine looking like right now? That's another really good question and a little bit complicated because I would just went to the dermatologist yesterday, uh, or not yesterday, a couple days ago, and he diagnosed me with perioral dermatitis, which is essentially like lots of irritation, lots of flakiness all around my mouth area. I'm actually not even supposed to be wearing makeup right now, so I need to keep my skincare routine super simple. So all I've been doing over the last couple of days at least is using the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Bomb B5 and... I keep my cleanser in here. Oh, oops. <laughs> the Velvet Cleansing Milk from Stradia. It's gentle and that's what my skin really needs right now. I see a lot of perfumes right behind you, Jane. Yes. Which is your favorite perfume that you've been wearing lately? I am the most obsessed with, as you guys probably know, Baccarat Rouge 540. I hate that I love it so much because it is disgustingly expensive and I am like over halfway done. I don't want to have to repurchase this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's just so good. It's literally the best perfume ever. My mom also wears it, right mom? It's good. Right. If you could make your own perfume, yeah. which notes would be at the top? Funny story, I actually made my own perfume a couple years ago and I was going to like launch it as my own perfume brand, which is wild and I can't even believe I'm telling you guys this. I don't think I was ever planning on telling you guys this. So I did already go through the process of like making my own perfume and it combined all of my favorite notes in one, all of my favorite perfumes in one. It was a little bit vanilla, a little bit rose, a little bit leather. That is what I would do and that is what I literally did, so. Okay, well why don't we get a little bit more comfortable and go downstairs okay. and sit on the couch. Let's go. All right, welcome to my living room. If you could go back and tell your 20 year old self anything, mm -hmm. what would it be? I would probably tell her to stop being an insane overthinker. I would tell my 29 year old self the same thing actually because I, consistently <laughs> overthink everything, big and small. 
it's uh, it causes me a lot of anxiety and um, yeah I would like to not be such a big overthinker then and now what is your favorite drink right now my favorite fun drink right your now favorite fun drink I love that poppy it's literally my last one I recently discovered poppy and it is so good, you guys. First of all, it's so hard to find in Canada. Never so I'm heard so of it. So sorry for all of my Canadians because I had to like literally order this online. But the uh, this is the strawberry lemon flavor. Not my favorite, if I'm going to be honest. I really love their Dr Pepper version and their cola. It's so good. It's like a healthier soda. It's very delicious. So matcha or coffee. <laughs> That's like asking me what my favorite child is. And that's imp almost impossible for me to say because I drink both weekly. I mean, it really depends on how I'm feeling. I literally could not tell you. Are you still liking your new coffee machine? I am. This is my Breville Bambino and uh, I really wanted an espresso maker. And this honestly is perfect. It's so, so good. Do you want me to make you a coffee? I would love a cup of coffee. I was hoping you would say yes because I want to show off my latte art skills. <laughs> While you're doing that, you can answer another question. Yeah. Have you always lived in Montreal? I have, and it's really funny because throughout all of my time, like on social media, everybody always thinks that I'm either from Toronto or from Vancouver. <laughs> Let's just wait till this grinder stops. It's a little bit loud. I think because I maybe don't have like a French accent, people associate Montreal and Quebec with being super French, which it is. People just don't think I'm from Montreal. Also, I, I didn't until recently mention more often that I'm from Montreal. So maybe it's my fault too. Do you ever see yourself moving? No, I really don't. I love Montreal. Um, all my entire family is here now, which is great, except for my oldest sister, which kind of sucks. I wish she was here, but she is not. Um, and I, I, I love my city. I really do. What's your favorite thing about Montreal? The restaurants are absolutely my favorite thing about Montreal. Our food it's just so good. And honestly, I feel like we're very spoiled here. Whenever I go anywhere else, any other city, I'm like, yeah, this is good, but Montreal's kind of better. So which restaurant <laughs> is your fave? Another question where it is, it is almost impossible for me to answer because there are so many ones that I love. Do you think you can guess my favorite? I totally know your favorite. What is it? <laughs> absolutely 100% Tuck Shop. Yes, yes. Tuck Shop is definitely my favorite. You're right. It is uh, where I go for like all my special occasions. Actually, it was the restaurant that I would only go to for special occasions for a while, but now I go, I feel like weekly. Like, they they, they kind of know me by name there, and I feel very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect timing. Can you show us your latte art? I can. Okay, I've really been practicing my latte art, guys. Um, I've been sharing it a ton on Instagram, and you know those like ink blot tests that people do when you're going through like a psych exam? <laughs> it's essentially the same thing where I'm like, can you see what's in my latte art? I do have a couple tips of how to get good latte art that I read up online because yes, I did Google it. Do you think you'd make a great barista? No. Just gotta wait for the milk to froth and foam. Okay, so this is what I've learned. You want to pour in the milk, and then once you get to the point where you want to make the latte art, you have to go really close with the spout to, to get a nice... Oh. Oh. Oh, God. Well, I think that's probably... Oh, no, I messed it up! <laughs> it's the worst thing you've ever done. <laughs> it's literally terrible. There's well, no art to be seen. It looks like modern art. Not even. What do you even see? I see nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's embarrassing. Yeah. No, barista, you're not. Tastes good. Though. I thought that was for me. Oh yeah, right. I'll put it here for you. Thank you. You can have it later. Do you have any book recs? Big Swiss, I think, is one of my current favorite reads or one of my favorite reads that I've read lately. This is a book that I've literally just belly laughed the entire time I was reading it. Like, it is so funny, so hilarious. The writing style is so unique. I just loved it so much and I read all of her other books after reading this because I liked it so much. So what are you reading right now? I just finished Villains from V.E. Schwab. I did like it. It wasn't my absolute favorite from her, but it was it was a good read and I read it pretty quickly. I'm also reading uh, Lessons in Chemistry, which is a very popular book right now, and I'm, I'm liking it so far. I'm only like two chapters in, but so far so good. Hey, move aside. <gasps> what? Look, oh. are you still crocheting? I am still crocheting. I hope you guys are proud because um, it did not end up in my, in my hobby graveyard. What's the newest thing you've made? I am so glad you asked, Mom. Why? 
because I actually made something for you. And no this is not, way. And this is not even planned. My mom has been begging me to make her something, uh, but and I just haven't had the ch a chance, but I, oh. I did it recently. Let, let me see. And he's a little bear. Oh, he's so cute. I was gonna put a little keychain on me. him too. But he's for you. Oh, thank you. I hope you like him. I love him. <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. So what do you need to start crocheting? Um, you really don't need much. What's really nice about crocheting is that it's not expensive to start. It doesn't require like that many tools. All you need is some yarn, a crochet hook in various sizes. You can get them off of Amazon. Crochet, uh, stitch markers, sorry. Stitch markers are really important. Stuffing, <laughs> if you want to make amigurumi. And that's kind of it. All the other stuff is kind of just like extras plus patterns. Of course, you need patterns. So what hobbies did end up in your hobby graveyard? Oh God. Um, I am definitely known for starting things, being really obsessed, being really intense about them, and then never touch them ever again. And I have quite a full hobby graveyard. A lot of things in like the craft arena, I actually have embroidery that I started, which I, I bought like all this thread and, oh, I, yes. and I used it like twice, but now I'm actually using my crochet, which is nice. So it is getting some use. What's the most <laughs> random activity or hobby that you started? Oh no. When I was like 18 years <laughs> old, I started Taekwondo. I spent an insane amount of money and I signed up for Taekwondo classes. <laughs> I got the outfit and everything and I was so excited. I went to one class and I never went back. I did not get my money back. Super. Either. Let's get a little more personal. Oh. If you had to completely change your professional field, what would mm. you do? You know, I've always said that I would be an interior designer because I love interiors. I've been working with an interior designer and I respect her work and what she does so much because it is, it is not easy. There's a lot of math involved. I'm not great at math. I don't know how, how well I would do. <laughs> <laughs> how would you describe your interior style? I would describe it as somewhere between like eclectic, mid-century modern. I don't really know if I could categorize it. I just am really drawn to mid-century modern pieces and I like things with color. I like things that are a little bit different. Give us the story of your newest piece of furniture. Oh, because you know I have those good stories. This is actually my newest piece of furniture. It's my beautiful new Coiffe table, I love her so much. Um, I actually wasn't even planning on getting a coffee table so quickly because we just ordered our new couch. We are doing like renos over here as you guys probably know as I've spoken about it. And the coffee table was like the last thing on my list. I was browsing Facebook Marketplace and I came across this and it was like a mid-century modern dream. I mean, look at her. The Beautiful. black, the wood, the shape, the curves. When are the renos actually starting? That is the golden question. Um, the renos have been pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, but they are finally starting, well, very soon, but actually we are going to be painting the vestibule tomorrow. This is the first time we're actually doing something physical to the space and I'm so excited. Oh, good question. Yeah. What color did you choose for your ah, vestibule? Let me show you. So we ended up going with the shade, shade grown, which was the warmer green. If you haven't seen my, um, vlog where I kind of go through all of my home decor things. You want to learn more about this and everything that we're doing. I'll link that down below for you guys, but shade grown is going to be the color that will be painted literally tomorrow. I'm so excited. So have you always been close to your mom? I'm very lucky to have always had a very close relationship with my mom. Um, you've made it very easy to have a very close relationship with you because you're just, I don't know, the best. Like you're so easy to talk to, not judgmental most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I just feel like we, we mesh really well together. Like we're very similar in a lot of ways, which sometimes can cause some issues because we, we like butt heads sometimes like any mother or daughter, but I'd feel like there's nobody who understands me more than you, so. It's true. Yeah. I think I need to ask you a question. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> so mom, what is one thing that people wouldn't know about me or be surprised to learn about me? Hmm. I think they would be interested to know that you were very moody. Guys, I'm just, I'm just a little <laughs> bit moody sometimes. I'm a Gemini. What's the thing that you cherish the most about me? I can come to you f with literally anything. That's very nice. Yeah. What's the best style advice I've given you? Mm, my mom is very stylish. Something that like, comes to mind first 
Can't wait to hear. Because my mom always taught me that like not to be scared to mix and match, especially when it comes to jewelry. I remember growing up, my mom would be like, wear like one earring that's long and one earring that's short. I'm like, mom, ew, that's so gross. Why would I do that? And now like that's something I really, I do often. I'm not fearful to like try fun and cool styles because you've kind of taught me like, who gives a shit? Just Yay. try it. <laughs> What's the best hand-me-downs I've given you? Oh, oh guys, oh, that, oh my that's God. That's a list. <laughs> my mom gives the best hand-me-downs, let me tell you. So this shirt is actually my mom's. I know, I'm regretting it I don't it right know why now. she gave this to me. I don't know why either. Because it is literally very cool. Yeah, it's like one of the nicest shirts that I own and it's absolutely incredible. And another amazing hand-me-down that she gave me, also <laughs> cannot understand why she gave this to me. This Prada bag, like what? It's so cool, it has all these metal grommets. Is that, is that what those are called? Yes, it is. I wear her all the time. Thanks, mom. She's too heavy for your old mother right now. Yeah, so she gave it to me and I was like, oh, no problem, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you meet your boyfriend? My boyfriend and I actually met at a bar. He came up to me and was very persistent in wanting to buy me a drink. And so he ended up buying me a drink and the rest is history. How long have you been together? We've been together for four and a half years. Do you get annoyed that people constantly speculate? <clears throat> when are you going to get engaged? You know what? I don't get annoyed because I feel like the curiosity is so natural. Like I'm equally as curious as to <laughs> other people's. Well, as to when I am getting engaged, no, I'm kidding. But when other people are like together, I'm like, when are they gonna be getting engaged? So I totally get the curiosity. Any dating advice? I feel like I'm not the person to ask for dating advice because I, I haven't dated much in my life, but I would say do not ignore the red flags. Have girl. you ever been ghosted? I have been ghosted, it was terrible. It was oh, so I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever ghost someone? No, I've never, and because I know how terrible that feels, no. Oh, what's your funniest dating story? Mom, this is something that I don't think I've ever oh, told you. Okay, this I'll is, block my ears. No, 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 but this is like a wild, a wild story. Not really a dating story, but it's just a funny boy story. So I was 15 and this was like the, the, the third guy I'd ever kissed before. <gasps> and we were, we were like sitting down next to each other and he looks over on my night table and he's like, oh, what is that? And he takes this like MAC lip gloss. And I remember exactly what it looked like. It was like a pink sparkly lip gloss. And he's like, what is this? I'm like, oh, it's a lip gloss. And he's like, should I put it on? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay. So he puts on the, the pink sparkly lip gloss. And then he goes, do you want to taste it? Oh my God. And I said, okay. We need to switch, switch, switch questions okay. right now. What's your favorite Taylor Swift song? My favorite Taylor Swift song, Right Where You Left Me. And your least favorite Taylor Swift song, if there is one? I don't really have one in particular. I'm not the biggest fan of her first album. And it's not terrible for me to say, but it's No. Good. What's your fa favorite Taylor Swift era? Uh, reputation. And one major question. Yeah. Can you recreate her Time Magazine photo? With Gus? Perhaps. <laughs> One second. <laughs> Are you ready for it? Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> the thing with Gus is he is a very chill cat. Don't drop him. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> no, he's jumping. No. <laughs> Holding on for dear life. Okay. Okay, I don't want to hurt Gus, guys. You don't want to hurt Gus. We don't want to hurt Gus. How is Gus? Gus wasn't so great in those, <laughs> those last three seconds. But besides that, he is amazing. Let me change. Squeeze, squeeze. I'm like, you. So how did you come up with Gus's name? I was on the phone with my oldest sister for literally like four hours, I'm not even exaggerating, brainstorming cat names. And she had mentioned Gus to me multiple times and I didn't like it, if I'm being honest. I was like, eh, it's not really, I'm not really feeling it. But then, I decided that I like the name Augustus, but since having Gus, I think I've called him Augustus zero times. His what name is, has been Gus since the start. What are some of his nicknames? Oh my God, there's so many. Gus Gus, Gus Gus the Floof, Floofers, Paw Patrol, my love. Oh, he looked like he was Poofy. gonna kiss you. He always kisses me with his eyes. Oh my God, there's so many. I can't even like think, 
think of all of them all at once. So are you more of a cat person right now? I am an animal person. I really love all animals. I love dogs, I love cats. I'm obsessed with cats though. I cannot deny it. I would like to have 17, give or take, at some point in my life. That would be really nice. I, I cannot believe how incredible cats are. I could talk for an hour about it. So stupidest thing you ever bought, Gus? This. I thought it would be the best thing ever because I thought he would be obsessed with it. He has never jumped inside of it. Oh my God. He specifically decided that he does not like it. So <laughs> what are Gus's current favorite things? His favorite thing I think right now is his donut. He loves this thing so much. He will sit in this for the entire day. It's so great too because it's a little tunnel so he could hide in there. He likes to like just sit right here though. So would you get another cat? Yes. <laughs> I think that's obvious. I don't know if and when, but I can definitely see myself having multiple cats. Should we go to my office? Let's go to your office. Okay, let's go. <sighs> Welcome to my very messy office. What does your average work week look like? My work week is definitely not structured because I do work for myself and I have a lot of different things going on and every single week really does look so different. Some weeks I focus more on content creation and like the YouTube side of things. And some weeks I focus more on my doodle stuff. So if you were starting out as a content creator today, mm -hmm. what three things would you do first? I don't even think I have three things. I would just say more than anything, do it because you feel passionate about whatever you want to talk about and be consistent. And also like allow yourself to make mistakes, allow yourself to learn, allow yourself to grow. You're not going to be perfect right off the bat. Um, for me personally, like when I started doing this, it took me years to like really get comfortable in front of the camera. How did you approach turning your passion for doodling into mm. a business? It's really funny because when I started my doodle shop, let's actually go over there. <laughs> this is my content creation side and then this over here is my doodle side. So my doodle shop is my stationary shop. And when I started this, I really didn't start it with the intention of it becoming a business. I started it by just drawing things and sharing it. And as people started to show interest and people started to ask me for stickers and prints, and then I just started doing it. So it was never like a conscious decision where I was like, I'm starting this because I want this to be a business. It, it was this weird thing where it kind of just happened very organically and very slowly. Can you show us your favorite doodle that you made? Again, asking me what my favorite child is. <laughs> well, one of your favorites. Um, oh boy. So I think my favorite thing really is these bookmarks. I just love the concept of it. I love like the wavy shape, the holographic foil, and I love that it says my emotional support book. Is there one product or category of products you want to expand into for your shop? Um, I would love to make planners one day. That's something that I've been saying I've been wanting to do now for like two years. And it's such a big project. I've been kind of scared to get started, but that's something that I would definitely love to do. And what's the biggest mistake you've made for your shop? Uh, over purchasing for sure, like buying too much of something that I'm just left with like too much stock. What's your best seller? My best seller, this is so easy, the emotional support water bottle sticker. People literally will buy like 20 of these at a time. It's wild. And of course we have to do worst. <laughs> the worst seller is, it's actually kind of funny because it's all the way up here. That's how little I sell of it. Um, it's these metallic oh, yeah, the butterfly metallic clips. clips. So any chance of a doodle pop-up happening anytime soon? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually did a pop-up not that long ago in Toronto and it was honestly one of the most fulfilling and best weekends of my life. Like I cannot even tell you how incredible it was. I loved it so much. And when I was finished, I was like, I need to do this again, ASAP in Montreal. And so this weekend on Sunday, I am hosting my very first pop-up here in Montreal. I'll have all the details for the pop-up down in the description box. If you guys want to come and say hi and shop the doodles. I'm actually so excited because I printed, let me show you. I printed some of my holiday cards to sell there. And right now they're really only available digitally. So if you want to get them in person, you'll be able to. So we have Meowy Christmas, if you are a cat lover. I also made one for the Swifties. Let's keep the Christmas lights up till January. So cute. I'm so grateful for you. Oh, so cute. So cute. And my mom is going to be there too. I am. Come say hi. So if you want to come say hi to me, my mom, if you want to shop the doodles, we will be at the pop-up this Sunday. So what's the best PR box you ever received? 
I'm not sure what the best PR box I ever received, but the best thing that I received in PR was definitely this thing over here. This naked palette was the most incredible thing that I ever received. It's literally a painting of my face. It is, that was great. This is just the most wild thing ever and I will cherish it forever. It's so freaking cool. How long have you been doing YouTube for, Jane? I've been doing YouTube now going on 11 years. Wow. So that makes no sense to me. It's crazy. Do you still feel inspired? You know, it, it really goes up and down. Uh, there will be some periods where I feel ultra insp ultra inspired, sorry. And there'll, there'll be some periods where I don't feel inspired at all. Um, and I hate those periods because when you're creative, not feeling creative is like the worst feeling. And what camera do you use to film your videos? I actually have several cameras that I use. This camera is the one of my favorites. It's the Sony Cinema Line FX30. It's a really wonderful camera. And then I also have uh, this guy, which I also use. This is the Lumix GH6, really great. The camera that's being filmed on right now is my vlogging camera. This is, that's the Sony 100, Z100, Z100, yeah. And what's the favorite video you've ever made? I think my absolute favorite video that I've done is probably that Urban Decay Live Swatch video that I did. I hired somebody from my, my class at the time who was like really into film and cinematography and he helped me film it and it was so fun. We have two more questions. Okay. What is your biggest YouTube related goal for 2024? I think one of my biggest goals is to be more consistent. Something that I struggled with a lot in 2023 was consistency. For the first time in my career, I really feel like I let myself take a bit of a, a step back a little bit, not super consciously, but more so because I have so much on my plate and it was honestly really hard to balance everything. And I really miss uploading more. And so I kind of want to figure out how I can do that, how I can be more consistent in my uploads, upload more often as I used to. I need to figure out how I how not to get burnt out, essentially. And guess what? We're at question number 73. What are you hoping to work on personally for 2024? I just want to really find a good headspace and, and stay there. I would also like to find even more hobbies that I do just for myself. Crocheting became that for me this year. And it was honestly amazing to be able to have like something that I just do just for me. Um, because a lot of the times I make my hobbies into my job. <laughs> like with doodling, I, I used to do that just for fun, but now it's become part of my job. So I don't really doodle for fun anymore. And that's what crocheting has become for me at, at the moment. I would like to find maybe something else. I really enjoy pickleball. Maybe I want to take up pickleball. Ooh. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jamie Page, oh for God, giving us this couple of hours of your time and answering the 73 questions. That was so much fun. It I, was fun. I, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed my mom as well. You've been wanting to see her in a video for in a while. She's been <laughs> behind the camera, but you hear her nice, soothing voice, which is nice. Bye. Bye, guys.